so the FGC is in a bit of a rough patch right now. Like, oh my god. 2020 is the year of exposing. Like, holy shit. For, so before we begin the in controlled chaos fashion, I have to say um, our condolences to those who um, have officially come out and shared their stories. I know uh, being a victim of sexual abuse and rape and all that stuff is very hard for some people. I actually have friends who've been through that, sexual assault and all that, and I couldn't imagine. So I'm very uh, proud of those who have got the courage to finally come out and say their stories because I know in this day and age it's definitely not easy to come out, especially as a young male or – Oh, we'll get to you. that one. We'll get to that one. Yeah. So uh, from I, I speak I think I speak for David and Red even though he's not here that we Red do not is too much of a pussy. Yeah, we're too we do not condone that behavior at all. And if you are ever going through something like that, whether it be mental or physical abuse, you know, rape or whatever stuff like that, we highly recommend you seek the authorities immediately or talk to someone who you really trust because no one deserves that type of treatment at all. So. Yeah. With that Jesus. little segment out of the way, let's uh, go back to control chaos fashion. So, David, it's just this is just ridiculous, man. Like, well, holy shit! Like, we've been, full we've been talking a bit before we decided on actually making a video out of our norm here. You know, us being two, the two on the channel that are more involved in this community. We we've been talking about this. And I brought up like, well, this kind of started all the way back with the Me Too movement. The the voice of to speak up and then we've seen it evolve into outright cancel culture and then now we're seeing it invade our space our what we kind of thought was like this space of like inclusion and all people are safe and uh, i guess let's use the coin term here safe space for us nerds and then we've been finding out well you got racist homophobes and now we got fucking I don't even know what to call them to not get demonetized or deprioritized in the fucking algorithm. Because, you know, YouTube has a habit of it. That's why people use Heineken flu to talk about the other shit. It's been the clever little way to avoid that. But fuck. Y'all can just masturbate, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have the control set at the best. So... What gets me about this, right, is that the domino effect is happening. Like, keep in mind, too, this all started, right, like, especially from the SGC standpoint, this all started with, I don't, I don't want to pronounce, mispronounce his name, his Twitter name. I think it's Puppe. Is that how you pronounce that? I think so. So, basically, he, for the, so, let me ask you for a bit of context, for the, for our fighting game fans, if we have any on the channel, right, so... This past week, um, the FTC is basically in an uproar. Well, FTC smashed community, but the FTC is still affected too. Uh, a lot of allegations have been coming out that a lot of shitty people have been doing a lot of shitty things to, to people. So it first started off as Puppe. Puppe was a, he's a Smash Bros. player. He came out and said um, he was essentially raped, um, sexually abused and uh, sexually manipulated by a commentator and also fellow Smash player, Senpai, who you guys may know her. She was co she commentated for... Hold on. <coughs> she commentated for uh, the final Smash at EVO last year, 2019, for the Tweak MK Leo uh, fight. Uh, not fight. Uh, game, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, basically, he did a, his experiences with her. Basically, they had sexual relations when he was 14 and she was 24. And at the time, he was like, oh, he had a crush on her, so he didn't really mind it. But because he's a 14 year old, you know, stuff like that. But now that he realized it, he realizes that he was sexually abused, you know, sexual all that stuff like that. So he finally came out and essentially spoke the beans. And now, this laid the domino effect for others to come out and tell their stories. Now, I know um, I'm still somewhat fairly new to the FTC. I think I'm like, I started officially, officially consider myself part of the FTC maybe like three years ago, maybe, when I first started, you know, 
looking at thinking about going to tournaments. I've never been, but you know, my first I've been to Evo, home, one of my best birthdays ever going to Evo and stuff like that, and getting more and more integrated into FUC. So I'm still fairly new. I'm still getting fairly new to all the new players, you know. I started following people from like who want Evo, stuff like that. So I'm still fairly new, but apparently a lot of um, Smash players. Uh, have been coming out again because I know a famous Smash player called Nero or Nero was accused by someone named Captain Zack. Uh, it's I know- been hell trying to keep up with all the shit you've retweeted here lately, man. Yeah, uh, like holy fucking shit! The amount of twit longers I've seen in the last month and a half on fucking Twitter is insane. Like, it's not. To me, this isn't just, like, the FGC video, because that's a little niche. It's a big, big, big issue in our community here on YouTube and Twitch and fucking every other platform as well, from content creators to just celebrities to all sorts of other little minute facets of our lives. And it took fucking the Heineken flu, this quarantine, to kind of be like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just burn literally everything to the ashes and start anew. And it's something that's been very, very much needed in a lot of these communities, especially with YouTube being a platform for, like, white supremacists, then finally deprioritizing them, pulling their channels. We have all of these rape and sexual misconducts with game developers and people in the industry itself. We have a lot of them coming from Twitch streamers being like, hey, this asshole over here, you know, tried to or did rape me at this con here. Here's my fucking story. Keep your goddamn hands to yourselves, you fucking creeps, and get the fuck out of our community. Like, it's gotten to the point where it's literally like, like you said, it's the year of exposing but it's been more like a three-year fucking span of just, like, we need to reset everything from Hollywood to the FGC. Like, and it's crazy, too, because Smash, because what's crazy is that every, if, from what I'm saying, everyone knew about this, right? Because, and that's the thing that gets me, right, is that when it comes to stuff like this and the domino effect that we're talking about, to me, from what I've gone through all this Twitter stuff, going through different t- Twitter feeds and stuff like that, it seems to me that people knew about this stuff was happening, but for some reason let it slide. And I'm trying to figure out well, where I well, come in. Thurman, it's a little bit of multiple aspects here. This is something I, I tweeted out a little bit ago. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to hold my fucking breath here because I'm going to unleash this on another platform. But inside the male dominated brain we have this but but you had sex right you you had you you got laid though bro what what's the big deal bro what why why is this such a big deal she's fucking 10 years his elder he's a fucking minor she fucking raped him i don't give a fuck about your toxic masculinity stop defending this fucking bitch Oh yeah, bro, and it's just like I've seen people who comment like "nice" and like because this is this is something we every time and, this. And sh- I was guilty of this when I was younger too. I had that same mindset even during my own experiences of this. I'm like, yeah, but but as a man, you're like blinded. They're like, fuck, I at least had sex, right? But no, no, it's not oh fucking k to have that that mindset of like shaming him for ha- speaking his fucking story about when he was a fucking minor. 14, man. She was 24. He, he was looks 14. like a fucking 10-year-old in the picture, for Christ's sake. And I heard it was happening from when he was 9 to 14. So this is, like, four years, bro. Like, she like she, she wasn't even double digits yet, mind you. And she literally went after him. Like, that's fucking terrifying. Like, that's actually terrifying. Like, she knew... Like, this is a 9-year-old... To fourteen year old, and she still went after him. That is fucking scary. Okay, and because he's okay. a woman, people are like fucking, like it, it's crazy because all, all these allegations. Like I, I'm happy he came out too because no one should have to hold this stuff in, right? And as a child, you maybe you know growing up, he was like, oh shit, what she did was actually rape. But he didn't want to say anything because she was a very popular streamer and very popular, you know, 
a celebrity in the FTC. She probably could, you know, make – because keep in mind, too, when you're growing up, right, and gaming is becoming more and more popular as a sport now. Like, it's already very popular in Korea, South Korea. But, Amer- you know, America's starting to realize, oh, shit, maybe we can, you know, monetize video games, you know, make it a sport, make it an esport, right? So esports are becoming very popular, right? And when you're a kid growing up and you want this to be your career – and and from what I'm getting from the backstory, Sydney Senpai was essentially his coach, right? Like his mentor, from what I'm gathering. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but basically that's the that was their relationship, right? And could you like imagine you couldn't you can't like go against like your fucking your especially as a child you can't go against someone who's teaching you, someone who's trying to train you to become a fucking you know, an athlete, a superstar, right? So, and he even said that he liked her. So, from the fact is that he was a child, he he didn't necessarily know what he was doing was wrong until recently, right? So, at the same time, you can't just sit here and be like, "Oh, why is he coming out? Why is he complaining?" Well, first of all, he was a fucking child, right? Right. Even you're not supposed to go after a fucking child when you're in your twenties, anyway. Secondly. You have to understand that he was still a young child. He had feelings for her, so he mistook those feelings for, you know, genuine, and she took advantage of that. Manipulation! Yes. Manipulation, look up the word. Also, look the word. also look up the word grooming. Because that's what yeah. this fucking is. She fucking groomed him from 9 to 14, and possibly even longer than that, and tried to fucking use that, but I'm your coach, do what I say mentality which is the fucking most disgusting betrayal you can have here because you're looking up to her as your fucking teacher your fucking coach and she's taking advantage of you i i really wish i could get red to edit a fuck count on our video sometimes (laughs) i'm so goddamn pissed right now so like even just even not even just with him right so like we move on to all these other allegations we see like I said, Nero's getting caught out, you know? I know uh, a lot of other Smash players have been released as being uh, pedophiles and coming out. It's not even just the Smash community, bro. Joey Cooler, the, one of the head honchos at EVO, has been accused, okay? Which is why it's on the back of our monitor, because we wanted to fucking bring that up. Like, he... Okay, so, and then we I knew sh- nothing about this till you told me in the group chat, so fill me in so, fully here. So, basically... I have to show you the tweet because I can't read. Basically, someone came out and basically said that he back then used to, I think, blackmail or bribe them for sexual favors for arcade uh, tokens or matching or whatever. I didn't read the full story because I did. Mm. You, you but, get a little tired after a while reading twit longer yeah. after twit longer after twit longer and be like, Jesus Christ. So, the fuck basically, is wrong? You know, and all this shit like that. And now, what has this done? It just uh, dumps their fire. Like, uh, people from different communities are coming, like, even Shenku. Shenku, someone that I followed, someone that I was like, he won Evo as Blaze Blue Cross Tag. Blaze Blue Cross Tag is probably one of my favorite fighting games of the few years because of how this, I can credit this game to be probably one of the, one of the first games I was actually going to go competitive for. Ew. And so he was a champion of last year's Evo, and he won Arc Revo, and he even came out with some bullshit, right? And then we have all these people coming out, and then now Joey, someone who's ahead, Honcho is coming out, and let's, this is what this has done, right? So as of right now, Evo may be canceled because Capcom and Netherrealm Studios has officially removed their games from Evo Online. So there will be no Street Fighter Five and no Mortal Kombat 11 at Evo, and that's fucking huge. Mind you, Street Fighter Five and MK11 are probably one of the most popular fighting games in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Literally, like right, almost like literally. Yeah. Like it's so uh, uh, MK is more popular in the West, but Capcom's Street Fighter is probably one of the most popular fighting games in the world, and it's not going to be at one of the biggest Street uh, biggest fighting game tournaments in the in the world. That's crazy. So, the whole Heineken flu has had me like lost for what all has been going on in the FGC for a while now because my craziness at work and everything. So Evo Online was those two titles, Blaze Blue, Blaze Blue, and Smash, right? No, it was, uh, well, Smash wasn't, because Smash Online is fucking horrendous, but this it was... true, we tried to do it on Twitch. <laughs> it was Street Fighter, <clears throat> so the main games for Evo Online was Street Fighter, Tekken 7, Grand Blue, Samurai Showdown, 
um, Dragon Ball Fighters, Soul Calibur VI, and Tekken. And then they had like other like tournaments that were going to be like MK11, Killer Instinct. Um, Killer Instinct, uh, the- Max or- was going to be... Yeah. For. So a lot of people. So what's happening here? Because of these allegations, a lot of people are backing out. Like two major companies backed out. Like I'm waiting for SNK, Arc System, and Namco to say something. I'm, I'm shocked Namco hasn't said anything yet. I, I think Namco's of the mindset of like, we're going to wait to see how many other people because also money. <laughs> yeah, because it's crazy. Because I know. No, I know another studios is more so like a western, but I know Capcom. Is very Capcom likes to focus on its west Western market and Eastern market because it is a Japanese company. So I, it's actually shocking to me that they're that they're focusing like on the not really shocking, but it makes sense that they're doing it from like a Western market standpoint. So now when it comes to Arc System Works, I don't know if they're considering it because Arc System Work, while they do have an American branch, I think they they do like their Western market a little bit, but I think they're mostly focused on the Eastern market. So I don't know if they're going to cave in and get it out, but Namco is, is the same way is, is the same way as like Nintendo and Sony and Capcom. They care a lot about their Western market, whether you argue that or not. So I don't know if they're going to take Tekken away or not, but I know for damn sure. Like I'm just waiting to see what more so like Japanese companies are thinking right now. The ones who don't really have like a like a foothold in the Western market per se, like Arc System and uh, SNK and stuff like that. Because I don't know what their mindset will be going forward. But NRS and Capcom are always like, fuck this guy, we're out. Right? And a lot of players, and I mean a lot of players and commentators are leaving because of this, right? And I've seen I'm- probably maybe 10% of what you've retweeted. Because I keep getting tagged in other shit and being over here doing this shit, PR stuff. So, between what I've seen you retweet, there's been, like, four whole-ass fucking teams be like, nah, fam, we're not doing this shit, not until he's removed. Max, the studios now I've seen, fucking Twitter refreshing itself. And the insane amount of, like, I'm seeing more of the stories you've retweeted. I'm I'm just at a loss for words. This entire year has had me, like, in the mindset of, not only just looking back at, I, I'm going to be real because I sent like whole ass fucking voice memos here. I am fucking thankful that I did not have social media till I was an adult because of the state of the world right now. If I was, and this is coming off of like rebinging a lot of off topic podcasts, the Chief Hunters podcast, and listening to like Michael's and Jeff's stories on like, cancel culture and how it's affecting the industry there. Like, granted, these were, like, 2018, and that's what got me in this mind instead of, like, wow, this shit has been going on for three whole-ass years, and we're still finding more scum rooted in our community. And it's not at all shocking. It's just tiring. Like, oh, here's another one. Get them the fuck out and move on. But I'm so fucking thankful. I am so fucking thankful that 13, 15 year old me did not have fucking Twitter. Because I was the cringy motherfucker in the goddamn back of the Modern Warfare Lively. Yelling at the person for not getting the kill. I was a cringy asshole being like, oh, I'll say the things that my friends were saying, not knowing the ramifications of it. But the amount of growth I've had from then to where I'm at now. Guess what? I used to throw the fucking F word, that F word, a lot. I'm a pansexual male. Huh. Who the fuck would have thought? I I don't understand the goddamn mindset of, like, these people don't grow as a human. Be like, oh, they said this when they were 15 years old. Let's pull their scholarship now that they're 18, 19, going into the NFL. That's the side of this that I don't understand, like, And it took also an ICP quote of all fucking things. 2020 is the wildest shit. But uh, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope have been like the most woke people in 2020. Be like, no, we're canceling the gathering of the Juggalos because we're about inclusion. Also, there was an interview where they're like, well, shit. I was dumb in those early records. And to think that I've affected so many people negatively negatively. 
He's out there telling his daughter, like, yeah, but your dad said this. His response is, tell him I was a fucking moron then. I've learned that between 20-year-old me and 40-year-old me. Huh. Fucking shocking. That's the side of cancel culture I hate. This shit here, this shit here, absolutely, 100%, root them out of the communities. Get them, if these allegations are proven, put their asses on trial if they can for their fucking actions. Oh, yes, actions. 100%. A hundred fucking percent. And to, while we were talking, a quick update about the Joey Weller situation, or such situation. So Evo made an official statement. I'm going to read it from here. Over the past 24 hours, in response to serious allegations recently made public on Twitter, we have made the first, seri- first of a series of important decisions regarding the future of our company. Effective immediately, Joey, Joey C. will no longer be involved with Evo in any capacity. We are currently working towards his complete separation from the company and have relieved him of all his responsibilities. Going forward, Tony Cannon will act as CEO. In this position, he will take a leadership role in prioritizing greater accountability across Evo, both internally and at our events. Progress does not have happen overnight or without the bravery of those who speak up against misconduct and injustice. We are shocked and saddened by these events, but we are listening and committed to making every change that will be necessary and making evil a better model for the stronger, safer culture we all seek. As a result, we will be canceling Evo Online and will work to issue refunds so for all players who choose to purchase the badge, we will donate the equivalent to we will donate the equivalent of the pro of the proceeds as promised to Project Hope. So Evo is officially canceled. Wow. Officially Canceled and Joey is no longer with the company. Wow, shame this video won't come out till probably Wednesday. <laughs> so, with this being said, most Alec, the investigation must have been true, and they, he, you know, so it's just, this is some good shit happening right now. Well, let's, I know we've been talking about the negative, but I think the positive lesson we're learning here is besides the cancel culture shit, I think the whole cancel culture is a different thing entirely. But when it comes to bringing these people, getting them out of the community, I think we're doing a great job of that. I don't agree with cancel culture at all. I think it's a very toxic mindset. And but it also I- feeds into this fucking wonderful, wonderful echo chamber of, like, all people are bad until they're proven innocent, and then even then, we're still not going to affiliate with them. Yeah, like, I... I am a big person, and like I hate cancel culture. But the I will say I'm liking what the FCC is doing, weeding out all these people and getting them out of the community. Because as I've been talking to my other FTC friends, this is going to harm the community in ways you could not imagine. Oh, because absolutely. we we've. We know that the community is full of racist and homophobic people and people who can know how to keep their damn hands to themselves. But now that we have pedos, we have people who've been doing extreme like rape shit like this is something you don't want other outsiders to see in your community and it's going to affect the ftc in a big way because first of all people keep saying it's just it's just the smash community no it's it's the whole it's the ftc as a whole because i've been seeing tweets talking about how like i'm so happy like dragon ball z fire doesn't have this type of people or sam, sam should have that type of people. like no two, it's, two it's, hours it's, later it's an FGC issue. I had no idea so Shenku, a blaze blue cross tag player, was a piece of shit until I found out you don't know who's a piece of shit. It could be a bunch of Tekken players who are doing some scummy shit. A bunch of Sam Show players who are doing scummy shit. We don't know. It doesn't start well, with it. At this point in Thurman, I think Sam Show is too new of a refresh here on the scene to really actually have that. Even then, bro, but- I don't try- Anything anymore, bro? I'm I I'm pessimistic. I I'm not gonna trust the FGC. Like I was literally thinking about going to like starting to go to more and more tournaments once the COVID shit go down. I don't even know if I want to do that anymore. Like you I don't know, know. It, it's a good thing that I've kind of stepped back from the community from a bigger aspect and started focusing more on not killing myself, learning one game at a time. But at the same time, I this hurts a big part of who I was when I was younger too. I remember, like, meaning some of my oldest friends, you know, going to an old... I hate using the name of the store because it's kind of a stereotype, but it was an old shop called Bambino's. Um, and basically they would have Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments, which was the re- main reason I went, but they would have all these fucking game consoles there where we could just chill out. And that was my FGC. And this was something that Max tweeted out, like, that my... Uh, just paraphrasing like it's also basically your local scene your fucking 
your buddies on the couch. That's your FGC, not Evo as a whole. That is not the pillar of fucking what the FGC really is. It's your little mom and pop shops you go to to practice. It's everything that you know and love. It's your online lobbies, your friends that you fuck around with in Killer Instinct. It's shit like that is your FGC. It's not these big, massive tournaments as a whole. And that that got me thinking back, like, yeah, I met so many nice, fucking wholesome people, but I don't know their demons behind closed doors. I don't know who the fuck they really are. I just know I used to fuck around with them when I was 13 to 15 years old, just chilling in downtown Belding, Michigan, <laughs> you know, or in downtown Greenville, Michigan, because that was my fucking hangouts back then. I'd go to my buddy's house in Belding, and I would go to fucking this little shop in Greenville. And that was it. That was my FGC for the longest time. Then I started going to our GameStop when they had Modern Warfare, and that slowly became who I was from, like, 15 to, like, 18. And then it was Halo for years past that. So, like, and then I just started getting back into it with you when we were covering Crosstag for a while, and then we're like, yeah, we can't really, in the direction we took the channel, it just really couldn't be that. But for fuck's sake, am I glad that we're getting all of this shit out there in the in the open so we can finally have this reset? Because, like you said, there's there's no knowing who the fuck these people are, truly. Oh my god, it's, uh, it's, it's just such a weird thing, bro, like, just, just, like, we almost had, from canceling an Evo to this, and um, it's just a domino effect, right? Like, that's what I'm saying, it's a domino effect. Pepe showed out, his, told his story, and now everyone else is coming in and sharing their stories, well, and I'm happy. And I'm happy they are doing that. I'm happy we're finally realizing that the people that we thought were good people are not. We don't need these people who are secretly f fucking pedos, rapists, and sexual assaulters to be in the community. They're hurting us more than, than they're helping us, regardless Absolutely. of their talent or their personality or whatever, right? Like, I never knew Mr. Wizard was a fucking pedo until just recently. Like, holy shit, yeah. my dude. Like... And, and that's then, really all it takes for one of these movements to start is like Me Too was one fucking batch of allegations against people. Then slowly, slowly it started going to like, yeah. And then we had Men Too where a lot of the more male or male identifying people came out and started telling their fucking stories. Then we had the fucking this gamer one, Jesus Christ. The speak out movement, we we're calling it, I guess, where it's a lot of the entertainment, and, like fucking content creators and influencers being like, yeah, this person over here, they're a fuckwit. They they cornered me in the hotel room or like this one over here groped me at a con. It And I'm not devaluing any of those by the way I sound. I'm just like 2020 has me tired of finding out how many people are shitty human beings. I'm glad I'm finding out that this streamer over here was a piece of shit, or this streamer over here, or this YouTuber over here, or half of the beauty tube is all fucking scumbags that are protecting other scumbags. But once we got to this, like, fighting game community gate, whatever this hashtag will be, and let's face it, that's what it's going to be by the end of the fucking week. It's going to be a hashtag of like, you know what? All this shit's going to be under this. And by the end of the week, I mean by the end of the week that this video actually comes out. Because this will probably be a Wednesday upload, according to Red. Who's mm -hmm. kind of taken my role from back in the day. It feels weird to be the only one creating a video and not just an archive. Not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, like... <sighs> Honestly, like, Jesus, bro. I, uh, there's nothing really more to say. There really um, isn't. There, like, we've, we basically said all we needed. I think the last thing we should really just talk about is just do better. How, what can we do to make the FTC? Because I'm going to be real. The FTC is in deep water right now. Like, <clears throat> I, like, if I was someone who's trying to get into fighting games, I would go back to playing shooters because like 
<laughs> oh, real? Like, the FTC was supposed to be a community that's inclusive. And I'm, a, you know, a lot next of... Week, FTC... Next week, Thurman, just because you said that, and it's 2020, we're going to find out the whole Siege YouTube community is a piece of shit. Yeah, like, like I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm a part of the FTC community. Like, I, I'm just, I, I was, I'm part of the MOBA community too. I guess you know, like, I like work. Like, That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, League, Dota two, but Dota two is a whole toxic fucking community. But you know, so I heard League. I mean, but like, I've heard bad things about League players. I heard some League players do some scummy shit. I haven't heard anything about Dota two players, but you never know, right? Like, I could go to real time strategies. You know, Warcraft, Starcraft. And that, like, but the thing is, but though, Starcraft's like, essentially gambling. <laughs> so it's just like, what can we really do, right? The FTC was like this one place where I really felt like we were a clean slate, but apparently not. It's well, just like, here, just... here's the sad reality of the world: there are shitty human beings in every aspect of your life. Your boss might be one. Your fucking coworker next to you might be a kitty diddler, and you would not know that. Until it comes out. And they'll be like, yeah, it makes sense. And you start putting the pictures together in your head. Fuck. Like, like I said at the beginning of the video, I've experienced this when I was younger. I, I know how fucking shitty this is. I've also been the toxic douchebag. Let's be like, well, shit. Wish that was me. Oh, where's she at? Because that's how the ma man's brain works when it's younger. It's like... That's how society makes you makes you feel like if, if you if, if you, you get speak it, out like, as a man, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, because you got like laid. Pussy, like you're a pussy, or for not enjoying it, like you're scary. Like we, our society literally shames men for not wanting sex. Like if you as a man say no to sex, you're seen like like a bitch, pussy. You don't want it. You can't There's handle it. There's plenty of times when I'm drunk that I don't want to have sex. Putting and that out there right now. And it's just you like see me at a con and I'm drunk. Don't approach me. Like, because I've seen it. I've seen it even in the debating community when there's been memes about it. Like the girlfriend memes when she comes home drunk and she like that dick better be up. Yeah, that meme is, that meme is funny. But there's legitimately dudes in the comments that be like, why are you running from your girl? If your girl wants sex, just give it to her. Like, basically saying, like, it's your obligation to have sex with any woman who comes to you. Whether you want, no. want, whether you want it or not. And that's not that's, okay. That's toxic as fuck. And that mindset needs to stay in 2020. I mean, that shit needs to go away. It needs to it needs to be Daniel snapped immediately. Yay! Cause... Fireworks have started. <laughs> so this is not okay. So, um, to end this video off, like I said, um, guys, just please be nice to each other. Keep your fucking hands to yourselves. It's not hard. Okay. No means like... no. I cannot believe we still have to say that. Yeah, well, people are fucking retarded, you know. Be kind to one another. I know the FTC seems like it's in a bit of a rough, but there's still some people trying to make it better. Just go out there, play some fighting games, you know, dust off that old PS2, you know, dust off that old Marvel vs. Capcom, that old Tekken, that old Street Fighter, you know, play with some friends, you know, play with your little cousins, you know, just have some fun, you know. The FTC is all about enjoying you, fighting You need to have some fun in this shitty fucking year. Yeah, Do and... You do what you enjoy unless it's illegal. And then if you, that's what you enjoy, fuck off of a cliff onto spikes. For real. So, shit. And like I said, like to reiterate, we, our condolences to everyone who's been affected by these shitty people. We hope... Our DMs we, are open. Yeah, like, seriously, if anyone in our community who's ever gone through that, please seek, you know, the authorities or seek any sort of help that you need. Because you are not no weak for speaking up. Trust yeah. me. You are not weak for speaking up. These people need to be held accountable for their actions. Literally. Uh, all I gotta yeah. say is people do grow. Cancel culture is fucking shitty. Yeah. But there are aspects of it that are really doing good, and this is one of them. Yes, 100%. I hate cancel culture, but at the same time, you know, these people need to be held accountable for their actions. Not Don't cancel them. Just, just remind them of how shitty they are. Remind them how that's... shitty they are, and if they can face charges, seek those fucking charges. 100%. And with that, peace. peace.